Good evening, dear students. So today we are going to start with a new topic. So the topic which we are going to start today is the coordination chemistry. So already we know what is coordination chemistry. Yes, what do you know about coordination chemistry? What are coordination compounds or what is coordination chemistry? Yes, how you are going to define it? coordination chemistry or coordination compounds. Yes. So coordination chemistry is what? So you, we uh, we study here about the coordination compounds, right? So you have a complex molecules here, right? We study about the complex molecules. So here, so which are the coordination compounds? So how do you uh, say that? Yes. So this consists of what? Your coordination compound, it consists of what? It consists of your anions and cations, right? So there in uh, so when you see a coordination compound, okay, so there is a, uh, uh, they, may, uh, they might having a uh, anions or there might be uh, some neutral uh, molecules, okay, which are involved in the, uh, which are linked to the central metal atom. So when you see a, uh, coordination compound okay so there is a metal so to this metal okay you are ligands so there are ligands or they are the n ions okay which will or the neutral molecules okay which will uh, donate the pair of electrons okay and they are coordinated to the metal ion so they form what uh, they form the coordination compounds okay so already we have uh, studied about this coordination chemistry Okay, so today we will start with the MCQs. Okay, we'll see some important questions based on this particular chapter that is coordination chemistry. So this is the first question. Okay, so let us start with the first question. An octahedral complex is formed when hybrid orbitals of the following type are involved. Okay, so these are the four options. A, D2, SP3, B, SP, D2, C, SP3 and D, D, SP2. Yes, try to answer this. How you are going to say? So an octahedral complex. What do you mean by octahedral complex? So already we, uh, we have seen these all, okay, about the coordination compounds, coordination chemistry in our ACE classes, okay. In detail, we have studied what are uh, the, you know, what are the uh, different complexes which are found, right? How the metal ligand, okay, uh, complexes form, then which are the different types of ligands, okay, what type of hybridization it will show. So these all things we have discussed already. So please try to answer how we are going to say an octahedral complex is found when hybrid orbitals of the following types are involved. Yes. So when your so octahedral, yes. Uh, before that, what is octahedral? So octahedral is what? Metal is there, okay? There is a metal. Uh, so this is a metal. And to this metal, six ligands are attached, okay? Six ligands are attached. And it forms a octahedral complex. What it forms? It forms a octahedral complex. So like this, okay? So in a square, okay, four ligands, one is above and one is below, okay? So like this, this is a octahedral complex, okay? Now, so this is an octahedral complex. So metal is in the center and six ligands are around the metal ion. So when this type of uh, uh, octahedral complex is formed, okay. So it depends upon the type of ligand, okay. It depends on what? It depends upon the type of ligand, okay. So octahedral complex, uh, uh, it, uh, it shows two types, okay. In octahedral complex, it uh, so depending upon the type of ligand what it is uh, uh, you are attaching to the central metal ion okay so two type of uh, uh, this is shown complex is shown one is called as the inner orbital complex okay one is called as the inner orbital complex and the second one is the outer orbital complex okay now what do you mean by this okay let me explain you so let me explain you so what do you mean by inner orbital complex and what do you mean by outer uh, orbital complex okay now, when you say inner orbital complex, okay, what is inner orbital complex? Here, the inner d orbitals are involved, okay. So, inner d orbitals, so inner d orbitals are involved, okay. So, your what type of ligand? So, we have already studied there are two types of ligand. One is the weak ligands, okay. 
another is the strong ligands now which are the strong ligand strong ligands like your cyanide ion right so these are the strong ligands so when you have strong ligand what will happen uh, so when you have a strong ligand okay they will undergo the inner orbital complex what do you mean by inner orbital complex inner d orbitals are uh, uh, they make use of the inner d orbital so what is the uh, type of uh, uh, hybridization it will show it will show d2 sp3 okay it will show what d2 sp3 why because inner d orbitals are involved when when this type of uh, inner orbital complex is formed when you have a strong field ligand okay when you have a strong field ligand now the second one okay then outer orbital complex so when this outer orbital complex is formed the or, or outer orbital or complex is formed when you have a low we, uh, weak field ligand okay when you have the weak field ligand now which is the uh, so in weak uh, when you have a weak field ligand so what will happen yes uh, when you have weak field uh, ligand so they are going to use make use of the outer d orbitals okay the outer d orbital so what type of hybridization it, it will show it will show sp3 d2 okay it will show sp3 d2 now uh, so uh, which are the weak field ligand yes which are the different weak field ligand like you are uh, you are a uh, hydride or uh, uh, halides okay that is your i minus pr minus right cl minus so these are all your uh, weak field ligands okay so when you have weak field ligands they will show outer orbital complex when you have a uh, strong field ligand they will use the inner d orbital uh, d orbitals and they will form inner orbital complex so remember these two things okay when if they ask you which or uh, octahedral complex is formed so octahedral complex is formed depending upon the type of the ligands which are present so if there are weak field ligand they will uh, show you the inner orbital complex and if it is a strong field ligand then it is a uh, outer orbital complex now let us see among the following so you uh, either of these two should be present so option a right what we have option a d2 sp3 right d2 sp3 so it can either show d2 sp3 or sp3 d2 so sp3 d2 is not there so our one so what type of hybridization it is d2 sp3 so it is the octahedral complex okay it is forming the inner orbital complex i hope it is clear okay understood okay fine let us go for the next one a compound, a complex compound in which the oxidation number of a metal is zero. A complex compound in which the oxidation number of a metal is zero. Now, which is the following has has the oxidation uh, number of the metal as zero. Okay. Now, already uh, in your lower classes, you have no. Okay. How to find the oxidation number? Now, here uh, your cyanide. Okay, so cyanide, so if you put the other, okay, so when you see the other ligands, okay, your ammonia is a neutral ligand, cyanide is a strong field ligand, cyanide is a strong field ligand, it is having minus one, this is having minus one. Okay, so when you, uh, when you find out these three, okay, if you substitute and find out, okay, the charge on this complex is, it will have some oxidation number. But your carbonyl, okay, CO is your carbonyl. So carbonyl is a neutral ligand, okay. Carbonyl is a neutral ligand. So it will not have any charge, okay. Hence, what will ha happen to the oxidation state of the nickel? It will be zero. Why? Because carbonyl is zero. X plus 4 into 0 equals to 0. So 4 uh, into 0 is 0. So X is equals to 0, right. So the answer is what? Answer is option number A. Okay, so your carbonyl is a neutral field ligand. So the charge on the metal, the oxidation number on the metal is also zero. I hope it is clear. Okay, fine. Let us go for the next one. A ligand can be also regarded as, okay, what can be a ligand regarded as? A, Lewis base, B, Bronsted acid, uh, C, Lewis acid, and D, Bronsted base. Yes, how we are going to uh, lig how you are going to regard the ligand as yes, can you uh, do you know uh, so already in our uh, in your lower classes okay uh, in equilibrium chapter okay ionic equilibrium you have studied the different 
definitions of acid and base, right? Different concepts of acid and base. So from that, okay, Levis as Levis theory, Levis acid theory, Levis base theory, right? Bronsted acid base, Laurie's concept. So these are the different concepts, okay, given Arrhenius concepts. So these are the different concepts. So depending on that, so what what is Levis base? Yes, find out the definition. Tell me what is Levis base? Anybody? So what is Levis base? What is Levis base? Yes, how you are going to define Levis base? How you are going to define Levis base? Yes. So, Levis base, what it does? Levis base, we talk about in terms of electron pair. Okay. When we are discussing about the Levis concept, so we talk in terms of electron pair. So, base, what does base does? It donates. So, it donates a pair of, donates a electron pair. Okay. What does Levis base tells? It, 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 uh, it uh, what it does it donates a electron pair then bronsted acid bronsted acid yes bronsted acid what is the definition of bronsted acid already you have studied this bronsted acid what it does it bronsted acid what it does it It donates a proton. Okay, we talk in terms of proton. It donates a proton. It donates a proton. Then Lewis acid. Lewis acid. Lewis acid, what it will do? It will accept a pair of electron. Accept a electron pair. Right. Accept an electron pair. And your bronsted base, it, what it does? Accepts a proton okay accepts a proton so this is in term of your ligands yes now which is the correct answer so what does your ligand or uh, what we have already discussed ligand is attached to the central metal atom okay so metal will be in the center and the ligands will what it will do it will donate the pair of electron right so ligand is regarded as what it is regarded as the levis base why because it it donates the electron pair to the central metal atom in the coordination compound. So, your ligand, okay, so you, your definitions are very important. So, you need to know the definitions, okay, fine. Let us go for the next one. So, uh, IUPAC nomenclature, very important. So, please go through the rules, okay, already we have discussed. So, please go to the rules of how to name the IU, uh, your compound. So, this is a given compound. So, IUPAC name of the given complex compound is what? Yes, so these are four options. So let us find out. Okay, so let me write it here. So cobalt is there. Okay, ammonia is there. Okay, then you have a nitrito compound. Okay, plus two ion. So how you are going to name this compound? So first you need to name the uh, ligand. Right, first you need to name the ligand. Now when you are naming the ligand, okay, so one is what? One is your nitrito group. This is your nitrito. Okay. Another is your amine. Next is your amine. Okay. So you have to follow what? You have to follow the alphabetical order. What you are going to follow? You are going to follow the alphabetical order. So how many um, first will be your amine? So how many amines are there? Five. Five means, so when you have two di, three tri, four tetra, five penta. So you have penta. Okay, penta amine, penta amine. Then next is your nitrito group. Ten, penta, penta amine, nitrito. Next is your cobalt. Okay, next is your what? Cobalt. Cobalt. Then after finding the charge, ammonia is neutral. Okay, then what is the charge on nitrito? Yes, what is the charge on nitrito? So nitrito charge. 
minus one. Okay, cobalt is x plus uh, ammonia is uh, zero. So five into zero plus uh, minus one equals to minus two. So x x plus five zero is a zero. Zero minus one is equals to minus two. X minus one equals to minus two. X is equals to minus two. Okay, this becomes plus one, so it becomes three. So what is the charge? It is it is plus three. Okay, the charge is plus three. So nitrate of cobalt three. Okay, and then iron. So this is the name. So which is the answer? Option number A. Okay, so follow the alphabetical order for the uh, your uh, ligands. Okay, fine. Let us go for the next one. So in this chapter, IUPAC nomenclature is very important. Okay, so IUPAC, uh, IUPAC nomenclature you should be very perfect with. Okay, next one more compound. So you have to tell the IUPAC name of this particular compound. So we are seeing the fifth question. So okay, fifth question. So the compound is K two N I C N four. Okay, is so what is the compound name? So tell the compound name. Yes, how we are going to name this compound? So now here you can see there is a uh, potassium outside the right uh, outside your complex. So first you need to name this potassium, okay, which is there outside your complex. So then you have which ligand? Cyano group. So how many cyano group are there? Four. So it is tetra, okay. Then you have cyano, okay. Then you have nickelate, okay. Then you have what? Nickelate. Then if you find the charge on this complex, so x plus four into minus one is equals to minus two. X minus four is equals to minus two. X is equals to minus two plus four equals to two. So the charge on the uh, this is two. Understood? So option number A is the answer. So the IUPAC name of this Complexes potassium tetracyno nickelate. I hope it is clear. Okay, let us go for the next one. Which one of the following is wrongly matched? Which of the following is wrongly matched? So here, these are the four options. Cu NH three four two plus is a square pin. Okay, copper is the your metal, and there are four. Amines, okay, amino group. So, option number A, okay, it is correct. Okay, A, okay. So this is rightly matched. So this is not our answer. They have asked which is wrongly matched. Okay, then nickel tetra carbonyl is a neutral ligand. Yes, carbonyl is a neutral ligand. So this is also correct. Okay, uh, carbonyl is a neutral ligand. So this is also correct. Then. Your FeCN six three minus is sp three d three. Now here, what you have to see, uh, uh, this is okay. This is in terms of what? Did uh, this is in terms of your uh, this? Uh, what you call uh, octahedral complex? Right? FeCN six is an octahedral complex. When you have an octahedral complex, it will follow two types. Okay, inner orbital complex or outer orbital complex, depending upon the type of ligand. So let us see the ligand is cyano. Sino is a strong field ligand, right? Sino is a strong field ligand. So when you have a strong field ligand, what it will do? What it will do? Strong field ligand. It will use the inner orbital, inner d orbitals, and it will form d two sp three, right? It will form d two sp three, and this is what sp three d two, right? So when you have a strong field ligand, so this is wrong. Option number C is the wrong. Okay, C is F T C N six. It is a inner orbital complex. Okay, it shows inner orbital complex. So your what it will show? It should show D two sp three. So this is wrong. Hmm. So it should show D two sp three. So option number C is the right answer. So this is wrongly matched. So FeCN six it is show it should show D two sp three. Why? Because it is a strong field ligand. So option number C is the right answer. Okay. I hope it is clear. Okay. Let us go for the next one. The IUPAC name of the complex CO. Okay, so let me write the complex. So it is a cobalt complex. Okay, you have a amine, you have a, a chloro, chlorido. Okay, so write the name now. Start with your ligands. 
start with your ligands yes so first you have what amine one is your amine another is your chloro right another is your chloro so first will be your amine alphabetically there are four amine so it will be tetra amine okay it is tetra amine then how many chloro two so it is dichloro okay dichloro find out the charge cobalt x plus 4 into 0 plus 2 into minus 1 equals to minus 1 x this is 0 minus 2 equals to 1 so this becomes x is equals to 1 plus 2 that is 3 okay plus 3 so it will be how much x is equals to 3 so 3 and then what is there outside there is a chloride so write it as chloride so what is the name tetramine dichloro 3 chloride so which is the answer option number b tetramine dichloro cobalt 3 chloride is it clear is it clear okay let us go for the next one Which of the following is a negatively charged bidented ligand? Which of the following is a negatively charged bidented ligand? Now, when we were discussing, okay, in the class about the ligands, okay, so we have seen the type of ligand, unidented, bidented, right, polydented ligand. What is a bidented? What is a bidented? So, from the two, uh, okay, so this will be attached. Okay, so suppose you have, this is your, so like this, okay. So two atoms of the same molecule, okay, they will donate. Okay, they will donate. So they are the bidented ligand. So which of the is a negatively charged bidented ligand? They are asked. Okay. A dimethyl glyoxymate, glyoxymato, B cyano, C ethylene diamine, and D acetato. Yes. So for this, you need to write the structures. Okay, you need to know the structures first. You need to know the structures. To find out the uh, negatively charged bidentate ligand. So let me write the first one dimethyl glyoxymato. Okay. So N di So, this is dimethyl, okay. So, dimethyl, okay, then glyoxymato. So, this is what? This is a negatively charged. This is a negatively charged bidentate ligand. Okay, negatively charged bidentate ligand. Okay, next one. Next is cyano. Cyano, we write it as Cn minus. So, this is also negatively charged but it is a unidented ligand right so you are on from both the end you can see from this both end the uh, your uh, uh, glyoxymato okay dimethyl glyoxymato will attach to the metal okay from this oxygen and from this oxygen right this will attach now cyano only from nitrogen it will attach so this is a negatively charged okay but it is unidented Unidented. So, mode of attachment is only from one atom. Okay. Only from one atom. So, this is wrong. Then, ethylene diamine. Ethylene diamine. So, this is your ethylene diamine. So, again, mode of attachment is from two. But this is a neutral molecule. Okay. Neutral atom. So, it is a neutral, uh, neutral bidentate ligand. Neutral bidentate ligand. Then last is acetato. Acetato is CH3 C double bond O O minus. Again, this is negatively charged, negatively charged, unidented. Okay, unidented ligand. So it is option number A, which is the negatively charged bidentate ligand. It is option number A. That is dimethyl glyoxymato. 
आई होप इट इज क्लियर राइट सो योर यू नीड टू नो द स्ट्रक्चर ओके नाउ आफ्टर राइटिंग द स्ट्रक्चर द फॉर्म्यूला ऑफ दीज मॉलिक्यूल देन ओनली यू हैम टू नो ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन द सेकेंडरी बैलेंसी ऑफ प्लैटिनम इन टेट्रा मीन डायक्लोर ऑफ प्लैटिनम फोर क्लोराइड इज सो राइट द स्ट्रक्चर वॉट इज द प्लैटिनम ओके देन यू हैव टेट्रा मीन टेट्रा अमीन देन डाइक्लोरो एंड क्लोराइड सो यू हैव टू टेल वॉट इज द सेकेंडरी बैलेंसी वॉट इज सेकेंडरी बैलेंसी सेकेंडरी बैलेंसी सो ऑलरेडी यू हैव डिस्कस ओके समथिंग कॉल्ड एज प्राइमरी बैलेंसी सेकेंडरी बैलेंसी वॉट इज द सेकेंडरी बैलेंसी सेकेंडरी बैलेंसी इट टेल्स यू द कॉर्डिनेशन नंबर इट टेल्स यू द कॉर्डिनेशन नंबर ओके ऑफ वॉट ऑफ द सेंट्रल मेटल एटम ओके ऑफ द सेंट्रल मेटल एटम नाउ यूर वॉट इज द सेंट्रल मेटल एटम सो प्लैटिनम ओके प्लैटिनम इज इन इट्स ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट इज फोर ओके सो टेट्रामीन डाइक्लोरो प्लैटिनम फोर क्लोराइड ओके हाउ मेनी सो प्लैटिनम इज अटैच टू फोर अमीन्स ओके एंड एंड टू क्लोरो सो वॉट इज द ऑक्सीडेशन नंबर ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट इट इज सिक्स राइट सो इट इज हैविंग अ सिक्स कॉर्डिनेशन डी ओके ऑप्शन नंबर डी फाइन लेट एस मूव फॉर द नेक्स्ट वन द एटॉमिक नंबर ऑफ कोबाल्ट इज ट्वेंटी सेवन The EAN of cobalt in Na three CO NO two four Cl two E. So in this particular complex, you have to find the uh, EAN, effective atomic charge, uh, effective atomic number of cobalt. Okay. So the complex is okay. So this is a complex. Find out. So the cobalt. This is given atomic number. Okay, so put the values. Cobalt is twenty-seven. Then plus how many nitro groups? Four into charge on the nitro group is one plus two into one. Okay, and the whole charge on this complex. If I remove Na three, it becomes minus three. It will be okay. Plus three equals to thirty-six. Find out, find out. Twenty-seven plus four ones are four plus two ones are two plus okay. Twenty-seven, thirty-one, nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six. Yes. So the effective atomic number is thirty-six. Option number C. Okay. So like this, you are going to find out the effective atomic number. Okay. Next question. A group of atoms can function as a ligand only when. So when does a group of atoms can function as a ligand? It is a small molecule. It has an unshared electron pair. It is a negatively charged ion, or it is a positively charged ion. So how does a group of atom is acting as a ligand? So for to be ligand, the ligand is what it will attach to the central metal ion. Okay, by donating the pair of electron. Okay, by uh, giving the Unshared pair of electrons. So option number B is the answer. Okay, option number B is the answer. Last question. A correct statement is so. Which one of the following is a correct statement? So these are the four. Uh, okay, CO. That is your cobalt uh, hexamino cobalt three ion is a paramagnetic. Okay, uh, then. Uh, this particular complex of uh, your manganese okay is a tetrahedral tetrabromo manganate okay then next is one more complex which is exhibiting linkage isomerism and d nickel uh, that is tetra uh, hexa amino nickelate is an inner orbital complex so your option number d okay hexa amino complex inner orbital co complex is formed by what it is formed by the uh, strong field ligand but this is not a strong field ligand it is not a strong field ligand so this is not a correct statement they have asked which is correct statement then cobalt okay this okay so 
so uh, as uh, ammonia it comes in what it comes into weak field again so whenever you have weak field again they will form outer outer orbital complex so this is wrong then this particular complex of cobalt okay so it is not going to form linkage isomerism it is going to form what it is going to form a it is going to form okay it is going to form you uh cis and trans forms okay it is going to form cis and trans Okay, they are going to form cis and trans. This is cis, this is trans. Okay, so this is forming what type of isomerism? Geometrical isomerism, not linkage. So this is also wrong. Then MnBr4, a Br4 2 minus is a tetrahedron. Now when you see Mn, Mn is 25. Okay, Mn is 25. The atomic number of Mn manganese is 25. So let me raise this. Okay. Then what is the uh, your Mn R1 3D5 or S2? Okay. 25. Uh, sorry, 18. R1 is 18. And you have to one, and you have to one, and five. Mn where is in is plus two state. What it will form? R1 18 and 3D5. Okay. So how many electrons are there in its d orbitals? 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Then next orbitals are 4s and 4p. Okay. So Mn, how many b are? Uh, 4. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. So what type of hybridization it is? It is a sp3 hybridization. Okay. And whenever you have sp3 hybridization, what it will form? It will form a tetrahedral geometry. Right. It will form a tetrahedral geometry. So like this. It will form a tetrahedral geometry. So, yes. So, this is a correct answer. This is a correct answer. Okay. So, this is having a tetrahedral geometry. So, this is correct. Then, cobalt. Let us see the first option again. Cobalt hexa amino plus 2 is a paramagnetic. Um, uh, cobalt is what? Cobalt is 27. So, it is argon 18. 3d7 4s2 then cobalt when you find the oxidation state of cobalt here it is plus 2 so it becomes argon 18 3d7 so write the 1 2 3 4 5 so it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 how many ammonia are there 6 so it requires 4s and 4p orbitals right so this is 4s this is 4p so next the what is that? So this is your ammonia, right? So ammonia will occupy 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, then it will go for what? It will go next for the what? It will go for the uh, your uh, so you can see how many unpaired electrons are there? There are 3 unpaired electrons. What do you mean by paramagnetic complex? Paramagnetic complex means there is unpaired electron. Okay, now when we write this, okay, electronic configuration of the 3D7, okay, cobalt in 3D7 complex, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, so there are 3 unpaired electrons, 3 electrons are there, thus it will give rise to paramagnetic, so option A and B both are correct, okay, option A and B both are correct, I hope you have got it, yes, is it clear? Yes, okay. So, these were some of the questions, okay, from the chapter coordination chemistry. So, the remaining questions we shall be discussing in the next class. I hope today's session is clear, okay. So, if you have any doubts, you can ask me. Okay, fine. So, in the next class, we'll continue with the same, okay, coordination chemistry. Fine. So, I'll end the session here. We'll meet in the next week. Thank you.